All right guys, what's up? So I have this super cool series of videos that I'm excited about that there is, the goal of these videos is they're going to be uh, kind of beginner videos for uh, gear recommendations and there'll be a little bit of technique in there too, but things I wish I knew buying my first gear. And yeah, I'm probably gonna do about uh, four of these videos. The um, first one, the first four videos that come in kind of two sections with another two subsections. I'm gonna make uh, videos for specifically aimed at people who are interested in recreational tree climbing or like scientific tree climbing, like collecting seed cones, thing, things like that. And then I'm gonna be making video, the other two videos for people who are interested in becoming uh, tree workers or climbing arborists. So, and then the two videos within that are gonna be, the first video is gonna be with like, the mo like budget friendly, cheapest gear I can think of that I used and what I would recommend if you're, if money's tight for you. And then kind of, not like exactly a super high end system from that, but the next video, is gonna be uh, kind of what I would consider the ideal setup for recreational tree climbing or for as a uh, climbing arborist. And then yeah, the the second two video, or yes, yeah, so those are the first two, low end recreational and ideal recreational. And then uh, it's gonna be um, low end climbing arborist and then ideal climbing arborist in my own uh, opinion. But yeah, so can't wait to get started. Let's do it. All right, so in this first video, I'm gonna be making recommendations for the kind of most economic, cheapest but safe gear that I would recommend for a beginner recreational tree climber. And this is gonna be like, not as cheap as I could go. There's, I'm gonna tell you which things I think you could not include, but uh, we're gonna to try to make a pretty coherent system here. So, and when I'm designing this system, I'm designing this system in mind for primarily fixed rope style climbing. I would not recommend really a moving rope system, climbing system for uh, recreational tree climbing, just because you're trying, uh, I don't know, uh, it's cheaper to not use cambium savers, and I don't want people to be doing moving rope systems without cambium savers, because then you're damaging the tree and your own equipment. So I'm gonna kind of focus on just fixed rope system. Also, after I make these recommendations, uh, at the end of this video, I'm gonna go for a little climb with the equipment that I recommended, just so that I make sure that I, I don't know, that this can function in the coherent system that I'm imagining in my head and not that this just can be a useless array of gear. But yeah, let's get started. All right, so the first thing that you're gonna need when you're getting started uh, recreational tree climbing is a helmet. Now, uh, rock climbing helmets are probably the best. This is a uh, black diamond vapor helmet. It fits my big head very well, but this is a pretty expensive helmet. You don't even need a rock climbing helmet. Just use your bike helmet that's laying around. All that's important is that you're protecting your head. Just, I would lean away from hard hats just because they don't really have a strap built in. So. If you wiggle around too much, you could fall off your head and then you lose your uh, head protection and you could possibly injure someone who might be below you. And that's another thing I'll add, is if you are a beginning tree climber, keep keep that in mind. Like if you're climbing trees in parks, don't like climb by walkways or anything where you could potentially drop something out of the tree and injure just another civilian below you. So, you know, kind of stay out of the way. Make it so that you are people are safe from you, I guess. I don't know. But yeah, moving on from a helmet, the next big important thing that you're gonna need is a harness. And when you're looking for low end, uh, probably the best way to go is gonna be a uh, inexpensive rock climbing harness. I find that the most inexpensive and usually the most comfortable for price is are the Black Diamond Momentum harnesses. These are just, uh, these are really good uh, entry level rock climbing harnesses and they're comfortable enough for tree climbing. They do the job. The pads aren't super big, so, you know, 
they're pretty uninvasive they stay out of the way but it it can be a little bit uncomfortable when you're sitting in it for a while but i climbed in this for at least a year or so maybe more and it worked good enough for me it was just right so this would probably be my number one recommendation would be the black time and momentum harness they're just they're cheap and they work they're pretty good and uh moving on from the harness the next thing that you're going to need is a rope and so this was my first harness this is my first rope when i first started tree climbing it was originally i think 80 feet long now it's only 50 because I've had to cut it over the years. Not had to. I used it for lanyards and stuff like that. But um, your rope length will depend on what trees you're looking to climb. If mostly everything you're climbing is under like 80 feet when you first start, then yeah, you can get away with only an 80 foot rope. Uh, you got to be careful. Sometimes your rope's not always going to reach the ground depending on how you're using it. But yeah, just be aware of that. Tie stopper knots in the end of the rope so you can't back off the end of it you'll be good so this rope's held up really well uh for uh recreational tree climbing i would recommend under 11 millimeters but no smaller than nine millimeters for a climbing line and pretty much i would always recommend for recreational climbing to use a current mantle rope especially because uh you, you might use hardware plenty and a current mantle rope will be good for that this hgp rope by sterling super durable works really well this thing is worn like iron it's a really fantastic rope i would highly recommend and you know what probably the best place to get a cheap rope is uh there's a tree supplier called west spur and they have a clearance rack where they just have odd lengths of rope and sometimes on ebay you can find like if a supplier has like odd lengths of rope they'll sell them so like it may not be like a 100 foot rope it'll be like a 95 foot rope but it'll still work it'll still be a safe rope it's just a little bit of an odd length, but you get it for a great price. So that would be my recommendation for finding a cheap rope. And yeah, I would go with Sterling HTP. It's a great rope, great rope, highly recommend. Now, after that rope, we're kind of going to get into my recommendations. And I grabbed enough of what I thought I would need to be able to climb with, but the cordage that I have is kind of expensive. You can definitely just buy to make the prussics that you're going to need to climb. If you use a Kern Mantle, you can't do like a Blake's Hitch moving rope system. It's just not going to tie. So you need another hitch cord that you can tie around the rope to ascend on the rope. And you could just get accessory cord. You can just get like 8 mil accessory cord is what I would recommend. You know, as long as it's rated, probably like a breaking strength of like four to five thousand pounds something like that I don't know and uh, if you have the choice between nylon or polyester go with polyester but ideally you want to buy things that are made to be hitch cords like both of these are both heat resistant cordage but they're kind of expensive they're like multiple dollars per foot usually like sometimes you can get it cheap like a dollar a foot but yeah it's nice to have something that is actually going to hold up to the rope on rope wear so you're going to be able to you're going to need to have enough rope to at least make like two prussics which i don't remember how much you need to be able to tie the two eye to eyes but usually like a lot of places you can just buy like 20 feet of cordage for not that much money especially if it's not uh heat resistant stuff so yeah just get like some eight millimeter cordage and like 20 feet and you'll be able to make everything you need from that to make your prussics and loops and stuff but then i would recommend having like when i first started i only had two carabiners which you could definitely do two locking carabiners but the system that i'm going to be using with the rest of this gear i have about five here and i think that's going to be like perfect for what i need i think that's going to work well you could probably do fine with just three uh, you could, there are systems you could come up with where you'd use no carabiners, but kind of five locking ones is what I would prefer to go with, but any number under that you could definitely make work. The carabiners are just going to make it quicker and easier to clip onto stuff and things like that. You could definitely just tie knots for everything, that's entirely a possibility. 
but when you are tying prussics, I would recommend not tying a looped prussic like this. Uh, I like split tails like this, tying just two uh, double fishermen's on either side so that you can tie different knots instead of just a standard prussic or like clem heist knot. Um, an optional piece of gear that I have on here that I will show you how to use and how it makes your life a lot easier is a hitch tending pulley. This isn't required. I will definitely climb without it, but it does make your life a lot easier and a lot faster. And having two would make things way faster, but I'm just going to go with one when I go on this climb. And the only other tool other than a carabiner is some kind of descent tool. You could use a rescue eight. This is a larger rigging plate. This will work just great. Uh, but you could just munter hitch off of a big carabiner like this, but that does kind of twist up your rope. And this plate's only like $10 or $12. So that's definitely something that I would recommend is getting some kind of belay plate or figure eight uh, device for rappelling. Uh, especially since the system I'm talking about is not a moving rope system. So you can't just do this lowering on just hitch cords. So it's nice to have a tool like this. But yeah, that's it. I do have this sling on here but the only reason I have this sling is because I didn't have that 20 foot of accessory cord idea that I was telling you about lying around I didn't have some rope that I could just quickly throw into a sling to use as a foot loop so I'm just using this sling that I had sitting around so the, these all this all these textile things you don't have to buy all this separately you could make this cheap by just buying one 20 foot length of accessory cordage. And remember, you're buying rated stuff. Don't go to Home Depot to get your ropes and stuff. Not a good idea. Buy rated climbing lines. So, yeah. This is probably going to be all I'll need to climb a tree. The only other thing that I'll talk about last is a uh, throw line system. So, when I started, I just uh, would just put like a water bottle or something on the end of my rope and throw it over the lowest branch. But if you want to shoot higher and get more stuff and be able to manipulate your line a little bit better, you want to invest in kind of a throw ball kit, which are just like 20 bucks. You can get them for like 20 bucks. I would recommend maybe getting two of them because um, if you get it stuck, you know, you're kind of out of luck which there's ways to avoid getting it stuck but yeah you don't I'm not saying by all this but like yeah you get like for like 20 bucks you can get a throw ball and 180 feet of cord and that should be good to get you a lot of places I've climbed plenty of 100 foot trees with just that one kit so but it is nice to have spares in case your stuff gets stuck but yeah that should be all good. Let's go on a climb. All right, so might recognize this tree from other videos, but I just decided to do this one again just because it would be the easiest. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't know if I could have done it. We'll just do this one. So instead of just climbing it kind of freestyle from the ground, I'm going to throw a line up just to that one like four inch branch right there. And I'll kind of ascend up to that just so I can say, show you some of the ascent techniques. But yeah, man, that's like just too high that I got to use a throw ball. Well, not because it's so high because it's so tangled. But yeah, I'll let you know once I get a line up there and we'll pull the rope up. I got this throw line up over that branch that I wanted. Now I'm going to pull up my climbing line. Just do a quick girth hitch. And then just tighten it down on a climbing line, pull it tight. Not going to do anything fancy because I'm not really worried about it making it over this branch that's only like 15, 18 feet up there. Now to, I'm just going to cinch this tight up there. So to do that, I'm just going to tie a running bowl in. So we just have this thing. It's going to choker that branch and stay tight. And also notice how 
I'm all the way up against the trunk on the branch, that's the safest place to be. You don't want your rope out on that branch on like, well really any tree, but especially a white pine or spruce tree or whatever. And then I'll throw in a little backup knot. That's how I like to do it. Then we'll tighten it up. I am over that small dead branch that may or may not break when I weight it, but if it breaks I only fall a couple inches while it cinches up on that other stuff. So, it is time to get set up. We gotta start putting some of our hardware on. So, a press is probably the easiest thing to tie, but I'm gonna tie a friction hitch instead, or tie a different friction hitch instead, just because it's a little bit um, nicer to use than a regular Prusik knot. So by adding this um, pulley, uh, the pulley will allow the knot to tend. So if I pull the rope like that, it pushes the friction hitch up the rope. Whereas without the pulley, when you pull this up the rope, it might tend or it might uh, invert itself and get stuck. You gotta push it up with your hand. So by just adding this pulley, it'll push it up. And you can find these pulleys cheap sometimes, like $15, $12, I don't know. It's not necessary. You'll ju it just means you'll have to advance the friction hitch with your hand like that. But the pulley's a really nice addition that I would highly, highly recommend. So we got that, great. Now we gotta add our foot loop, which I have all this stuff on here. So let's add our foot loop prusik. Actually, take this off. Make my life a little easier. There we go. So we got a prusik here. That's what I'll be using for my feet. And I'll just clip a carabiner through here. Now, uh, if I would have been using tech cordage, I could either make this loop bigger so I wouldn't need a carabiner and I could just, it'd be big enough, long enough to use as a foot loop, but because I don't, I didn't have tech cordage around to play with, I'm just going to take a sling and the sling's what's going to be my foot loop. Just place it through here like that. And so my foot will go in that. I'll stand up, I'll push up this prusik, sit down into this prusik, advance this one, and then just inchworm my way up until I get where I need to be. I'm all harnessed up, ready to clip in. There we go. And then I'll tighten this up. Actually, I don't like, I'm gonna retie this knot real quick. I don't like how much slack there is in there. All right, so we're ready to start going. Just gonna sit back in this. Oh yeah, that's a climbing harness. Yep. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, that is not as comfy. All right, so push up the foot loop. Stand up. Advance your tie. Push up the foot loop. Stand up. All right, so now that I'm at stuff that I can just climb, like I'm just gonna hop into this tree and climb this until I can traverse over to this one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set myself up for uh, for a lanyard, because right now I don't have any kind of lanyard system going on. I just have my main climbing line. So I will put this uh, sling off on the same carabiner as my descent tool. Now, I'm just gonna move this prusik all the way to the end of the rope. And then just clip it to my hard point on my harness. And now, I can tie a carabiner onto this end and this works as my lanyard. You can do anything, a figure eight, whatever you like. I prefer a scaffold knot or double fisherman, however you want to call it. That's my favorite way of doing it. Now I can just say I wanted the lanyard around this tree to stay safe. I can just flip it around, 
attach it back here, lock it up, and then just tighten that prusik, and now I got a lanyard. Beautiful. Let's keep going. Hop into this other tree over here. So this is kind of spider climbing. I'm using both ends of the rope to ascend. And then always tending slack. Oh, I forgot gloves. Oh well. And since I'm here, I'll just break that off and tighten this up so I don't fall. There we go. I just need to get up there. Bad boy up. I might have a little bit of room to maneuver. Alright, so this is kind of a no no. Climbing above your tie in, because if I fell, it would catch me, but boy, would it hurt. Because just be like falling into the rope, you know, it's not a static rope, it's not going to catch you dynamically. So I'll get my lanyard around something safe and tighten it up so I can sit back and untie my line, my other climbing line, so see how my lanyard's holding me. Honestly, I'll just unbusy this a little bit by clipping the carabiner. There we go. Undo my knot, and then on this end, I will also put a carabiner. So now it's like I have two lanyards. Just like that. And now I can just keep switching lanyards until I climb to the height I want to reach, or until I gotta ascend a rope. Honestly, I'll go up a little bit just to show you how the lanyards are working, and then we'll go down. So, climbing up, take your other lanyard, flip it in, tighten it up, lock it up, wait you're not, make sure that's all good, and I can loosen up this one, unclip from this side. Beautiful, keep going. But I think this is as high as I'll go just because of how, uh, how long my rope is. So this is what, this is called double rope technique. If you're using this as your main climbing line. And the reason you need a cambium saver is because see as I do that, my rope's just sawing over this branch. So that's not good for that branch or my rope. So you kind of ignore when you do it with lanyards because you're just not going that far. And, you know, you can take your weight off the line to not be sawing into the branch with all of your weight. But it's still going to kind of happen. Ooh, that kind of hurt. All right. If I were to just go over one of these branches, which would be okay, um, with a moving rope system, you got to be careful because if the branch is sloped down at all, you could work your way out onto the end of the branch and snap it and fall off or whatever. So uh, what I like to do if I'm going to be traveling a long distance from my tie-in on a pine tree or a spruce tree or a pine tree, what I like to do is sling, unless, yeah, is sling two ropes or two branches so that the movement would bring it back towards the trunk. Now this will work all right on these two. Usually I like them a little bit closer together, but whatever. So all right, let's set up for rappel. So to rappel this, I'm gonna be using this tool. And instead of choking off these branches, I'm just gonna do it like you would if you were multi-pitch climbing. And here, I'm gonna take that off. And 
to be safe, I'm gonna remember to uh, put a stopper knot in my rope so I can't slide off the end of the rope. I'm gonna leave my lanyard or main climbing side on this end so that I can uh, take this press off too, so that um, I could lanyard into something if I had to. So I don't. There's not really a need for a stopper knot over here because all this would stop me from coming off the end. So I'm gonna take my compressor off because I want that. Now I'm just gonna pull this through until I get it down nice and close to the ground. So now, since nothing's choked off over here, I'll be deciding on bo descending on both strands of the rope. So once I'm at the bottom, I can pull on either end, and it should just, as long as there's no knots, it'll just fly over both these branches and down to the ground, allowing me to retrieve it very nicely. So that's pretty close to the ground. So now I can put on my uh, belay plate. Uh, gonna pass both ends through the belay plate. Beautiful. And then I'm going to pass this sling. You could figure out something rated to do this. You don't have to use a sling like this. And clip it through here and that'll just keep the descending piece away from me so that I can do an extra little safety measure and add a, uh, a prussic, uh, my prussic to the end of here so that I can go hands free because with that, a belay tool like this if your hand's not on the rope, you're not safe. So you gotta figure out a way to lock it off, which I'm going to do with this prusik. So if I were to let go of the rope or something were to happen, this prusik would tighten and I wouldn't be able to fall very far. It would just stop the belay. So, all right, we're all ready to go down. So I'm gonna lower myself into my climbing line. Beautiful, and then Make sure everything's locked up again. Do a good inspection. My prusik's not locked. Now I'll just unclip my lanyard. And I'm ready to go down. So I just feed, feed that with the prusik. And just repel just like that. So now the downside of doing this is I can only go down. I could not, I would have to reset up my system so that I could ascend again. On this system, I can only descend. So, it works sometimes. There's other places where it's less than ideal, though. So that was that. That was some spider climbing techniques with, uh, with just some cheap basic equipment. You can get plenty far up into the tree and with some extra know-how and instructions on how to retrieve the line differently and other things you could be well on your way to climbing some huge trees even with a pretty pretty short rope so if my rope was too short and I was at the top I would just go down until I found a nice spot before the end of my rope where I could rest and retrieve my rope and then reset but so it would have been harder for me to get a little bit closer to the ground before I descended all the way down here. But yeah, that was some tree climbing and just not that expensive of equipment. We just, not that much money right here. Hope you guys will join me on uh, the next video where we'll be doing this kind of climb, but with the equipment that I would consider ideal for recreational and scientific uh, tree climbing. So yeah, it's a little bit easier than climbing with this stuff, but even with this equipment, you can still definitely do it. Great way to get into the sport and understand what's going on, but yeah. See you in the next video.